yes, suit. Yes, put some clothes put some on clothes that on man. man. Put a suit and tie on him or something. Yeah. Dang. Yo, I would be mad too. That's like them putting Martin Luther King up there naked. Mm. Bro, everybody would flip out. Yeah, you, you saw how everybody reacted to the newest statue. Yeah. What's good, good y'all? It's, it's the Dumachettes React, and, and we're back with, with another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're, we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. On April the 24th, 2006, a statue of Surinamese resistance fighter Anton de Combe was unveiled during a noisy meeting in Anton de Combe Square in Amsterdam. Not everybody appreciated artist Jika van Loon's statue of a naked Anton de Combe. Oh, Opponents man. covered the statue with the Surinamese flag. And he, he, he don't look that naked. I mean, it's obvious, but... I'm, it's not. It's not giving as much detail. But who was he? But who was he though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And why? Why would they want him up there naked? Right. Then I'll, you know I I think I'll understand better. Right. Their outrage. Facts. Shouted, "We don't want a naked man. We're no longer slaves." Mm. Who was Anton de Combe, and what was his significance? Wow. To many Surinamese, Anton de Combe is a hero who fought for union rights and for human rights. Mm. Okay. But Anton de Combe also fought for the self-respect of the Surinamese, and he fought the traumas he had suffered as a child of a former slave. Yeah, bro. Yes, so put some clothes, put some clothes on, on the man. Put a suit and tie on him or something. Yeah. Dang. Yo, I would be mad too. That's like them putting Martin Luther King up there naked. Mm. Bro, everybody would flip out. Yeah, you, you saw how everybody reacted to the newest statue. No, it's not. <laughs> We've seen it. It looked We've, provocative. It does, but there's an angle to it. It's an angle to it. It was misleading everybody with the angle of the picture they was using. They should have chose. Right? They should have put some heads on them. Put a, some clothes. Something at the and same some time. Clothes. And some clothes. Yeah, well, really? he did have... It, it, again, it's the yeah. angle. He had cuffs. Mm -hmm. So, But you, it's, it could have been more detailed. It could have been it more... It looked like a different type of embrace. Right. So, yeah, I feel where you're coming from now. That man should have had some clothes on. And I have the aspect that he opgegroeid is in a buurt where also the geestelijke slagenij in grote omvang te zien was, waarin we allemaal tot de dag van vandaag die trauma nog niet hebben overbrugd, omdat we met z'n allen ook niet erover gesproken hebben. Dat men je continu erop wijst dat je, dat, je, dat, je, dat je niet goed bent, dat de dingen die je doet, dat die minder waarde zijn. Die tijd heeft hij hier ook moeilijk gehad op school, tussen de welgestelde jongens van wel eer. Nou, toen was hij ook bezig zijn identiteit te zoeken. Dus die identiteitsstrijd is niet pas in Nederland begonnen. Hier heeft hij al strijd moeten voeren. Man, When he left uh, for the Netherlands in the 1920s to find a job, he came into contact with anti-colonial and communist movements that strengthened his political awareness. Geen beter middel om het minderwaardigheidsgevoel bij een ras aan te kweken dan dit geschiedenisonderwijs, waarbij uitsluitend de zonen van een ander volk worden genoemd en geprezen. What's our favorite quote? I ain't gonna do it today. But what's our favorite quote? Put it in the comment section. <laughs> Het heeft lang geduurd voor ik mezelf geheel van de obsessie bevrijd had dat een neger altijd en onvoorwaardelijk de mindere zijn moest van iedere blanke. Back in Suriname in the 1930s, he was arrested for his activities as an advisor to contract laborers and deported to the Netherlands. What? Wow. Whoa. 
In 1934, after many years of writing, he published We Slaves of Suriname, an indictment of the colonial regime and the degrading circumstances under which the slaves had to live. The book was very daring for its time. The book was very daring for his time mm. because he was able to impact more people through writing mm. than he could through just speaking to them as individuals one at a time. Right. You see, no matter how much you try to take a person from out of his purpose, God always knows how to still use them. Bro, real talk. Real people talk. don't like to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you go down the comments of our channel, people don't like to hear the truth. They sure don't. Woo. Geen volk kan tot volle wasdom komen dat erfelijk met een minderwaardigheidsgevoel belast blijft. Daarom wil dit boek trachten het zelfrespect der Surinamers op te wekken en voorts de onjuistheid aantonen van de vredesbedoelingen der Hollanders ten tijde van de slavernij. De kom heeft in die zin een bevredigende werking gehad, ook op mij, uh, als het gaat dus om, om dat gevoel, om, om te begrijpen van uh, waar je vandaan komt, maar ook waar je naartoe kan gaan. What they, what, During what, the what Second World in, War, Anton de Kom actively joined the resistance, but he was betrayed and deported. Yeah. He died in 1945 in Camp Sandbostel. Is it funny to you that most great leaders get betrayed? funny i mean well not funny but like like as in like um suspicious yeah definitely. that they always get betrayed definitely that's crazy want he heeft een liefde gegeven voor al die blanken hier voor al die blanken in europa tegen die fascisten en door dat te doen heeft hij heeft geeft hij ons het beeld van onszelf niet dat we minder waardig zijn maar dat we helden van de wereld kunnen zijn en dat dat betekent hij History know your history know man. who you are facts bro facts don't let nobody try to take you out of your purpose stay in line mm -hmm. and you still gonna get things done if you can't speak it over social media or doing those things that's always a book you can write you feel yeah. me yeah or in your own path you he's, can make a difference he was definitely an activist yeah definitely yeah he was definitely. a good big and activist. he meant different things to different people he his people, his sur, sur what was called Surinamese. Surinamese, I believe so. He meant something to them, especially being a child of a former slave, getting, yeah. getting the opportunity of a better life in the Netherlands. Mm. We know the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they got good things going on there, and he was an activist for those people. Look how that man spoke about him, said that he died <laughs> for them. So we would like to know more about the statue and was it updated? Did they do anything yeah, different yeah. about it? Or did the people just go crazy and say, y'all know y'all ain't going to change it, we're going to knock it down. Because we have moments out here where people then knocked it down. Yeah. Or, you know, the wind blew it down. <laughs> the wind. The wind blew it down. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. that's a bar. So, go ahead, babe. That is a bit. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have a day with our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way. As well as our joint feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Send in your reaction request through our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.